It's Just Business with Steve Thomas and your host, Chris Larry. Hello and welcome to another episode of It's Just Business. I am not Chris Larry. Chris is probably thankful for that. Uh, I am Steve Thomas. Chris has better things to do than mess with our little show this weekend. But we always have our super sub, Alex. How are you, Alex? I'm good, Steve. Happy 4th of July weekend to you. Absolutely. Happy 4th of July. I hope, for those of you listening to this, I hope your 4th of July went well. We are recording this on Saturday morning uh, because Alex and I have no life and we do things like podcasts in the middle of a holiday weekend. Right. Well, at the start of a holiday weekend. It's not the middle. Quite that yet. is true. It is the start of a weekend. So we can still do nothing yes. and sit around our house for the next two and a half days. Right. Just <laughs> eat a lot of grilled food. That's my plan the next few days. See, I, I don't eat a lot anymore. You right. Know. Well, well, you know, you could do like grilled chicken or something. That'd well, be I do, healthy. but grilled, the part means I'd have to grill it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You still don't cook even after but, all everything. If you want a little <laughs> medical update, because I wrote the um, the medical article yeah. about what happened to me a couple months ago. So um, I am on this heart-healthy diet. But since I was on this heart-healthy diet, I decided back in April to get to lose weight all the way down to where I was in college, just to see if I could do it. And I have What's done that, that number, just so we know? About 100, between 160, 165. Okay. And so I did that. In two Which, months, great lost, for you, man. Yeah, well, lost more than thirty pounds because I had also gained too much weight. I mean, I was going to look like you if I, you know, right. kept doing it. And God, we don't want to look like Alex. Um, so anyway, so I figured out how easy weight loss is. All it is is a matter of discipline and mental toughness, and that's it. And just hating everything you eat. <laughs> well, have I given the four? Have I given the five rules of diet? Yeah, yeah, you have. Okay, At least yeah. to me, you have, yes. Okay, well, so let's go over this, because if somebody wants to write a book about this, remember that this is my idea first. Please note, I, I know many diet books that already have these five rules. <laughs> but not in the great way I say it, though. Okay, go ahead. Number one, get over the fact that food is fun. Food is not fun. Food is merely sustenance. If you're bored, if you need entertainment, find something else to, to, to do. But food is not there for anything but to keep you alive. If you get right. to that mindset first. That's number one. Number two, you can't eat anything that tastes good or has flavor. Right. If it either tastes good or has flavor, it's not for you. Number three, only drink water. You can't drink alcohol. You can't drink soda. You can't drink anything but water. And I would add a caveat to that, sugar-free vitamin water. That right. Those two things, and that's it. Maybe, maybe uh, herbal teas, things like that. They don't have calories. Yeah, I don't drink tea, so pro but yeah, yeah. that also has caffeine. Um, you don't like caffeine, caffeine generally. Well, it's not that I don't like caffeine. It's that I caffeine is not good for me. Right. Well, yeah, with problem. your health issue. Yeah. 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 And um, always stay hungry. You know, you got to yeah. always stay a little hungry. You can't ever be full. Just always, I'm not saying starve yourself, but always be a little hungry. And then the last one is you can never have a cheat day ever. Right. You do those right. five things, I promise you, absent some medical problem, that neither Alex or I are doctors, but it, absent that, you will always lose weight. For yes. most people, that sounds like misery, but to me, it doesn't. Right, right. To, well, you know, you've always had weird eating habits anyway, so <laughs> like it's not... Well, I mean, Alex says that, and, and what he means is I'm not a foodie. Right. I don't really care. I eat the same thing for lunch every single day because it's just convenience more than anything else. So, yeah, I'm not a foodie. Alex is a huge foodie. Right. I, I like going out to restaurants and trying new things. I, I, I've i had goals of I want to eat every species on the planet at one point. You know, like I, I'm I'm weird like that. Even a giant panda. I, I would eat a panda. If, if someone <laughs> offered me panda, I'd try it. See, yeah. Alex and I have had discussions where he'll say I spent like eight hours smoking bacon. And I say, well, I microwaved it for 55 seconds. I never <laughs> spent eight hours smoking bacon. Bacon doesn't need that long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you've spent a significant amount of time doing bacon before. Yes, grilled bacon, uh, <laughs> candied bacon. Yes, I've done all sorts of... I, li I like to cook. It's fun. Another um, news, I went yeah. to a concert, Alex. Oh, what concert? I saw Tom Kiefer, who's the lead singer of Cinderella, mm -hmm. L.A. Guns, and Faster Pussycat. 
That's nice. Nice yeah. little concert. I mean, for those of you who are youngins, you know, it's not going to appeal to you, but in terms of like a gritty hard rock show, that was outstanding. Yeah. And I can, I've nice. always said, you know, there's never such thing as too loud. Right. However, comma, when you have a heart problem, this didn't occur to me until I was there. And so then I feel the bass guitar for LA Guns literally moving my organs. I mm-hmm. thought this maybe this isn't the best thing for me, but I did it anyway. <laughs> it, it there's a line, uh, it's a common line, I, but I remember it from uh, oh, I can't even remember the movie. But if it's too loud, you're too old, Steve. You might be getting to too old. <laughs> it's not that it's too loud that it bothers me from a hearing perspective. I was concerned, right. like if this thing is like vibrating my heart, right? It's right. going to be he- unhealthy for me. And then I decided, well, if I have to go, it's not a bad place to go at a rock concert. No, no. You know, uh, certain people. Let's do it like, anyway. Everyone's got a place they would probably be very happy dying. You for rock me, it'd be in front of a for me in front of a wall of guitars. Right. It might be it. Right. I had an uncle. He was a diehard Mets fan. He actually died at Shea Stadium. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, like, and I, when that happened, I was a teenager, but I remember my dad and I talking. And he's like, if he had to go, that's probably the best spot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. So that's what it so it was not too loud for me. I want to make right. that abundantly clear. The point was I was beginning to get concerned about my heart. And so to the point where I was sitting there like uh, trying to check my pulse, look at this mm-hmm. little monitor thing I'm wearing to make sure it didn't go off. And then all was well. I, I um, wonder uh, I wonder if you like looked at the monitor's chart if it would notice a difference for that couple well, of Well, it doesn't go off. It, I mean, the end date is just sent on. I never see it. And the only reason I would see it if it something really bad happened. Right, right, right. But I so wonder I, if the it, actual data would show anything. It, oh, you know, I don't know. Of, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll never, I won't know it. You know? It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting science experiment is what I'm saying. <laughs> I just prefer not to use myself as a guinea pig. But I well, did do that. It yeah. could have been a bad day. That's all I'm saying. It wasn't. Another group of people that had a really bad day is the pack 12 yes and it looks like it's getting worse steve it oh just, it's yeah. getting worse okay so here's the story you might have seen headlines for this um what happened is usc and ucla out of the clear blue sky out of nowhere yeah announced that they were leaving the pack 12 to join the big 10 now mm-hmm. usc and ucla are by far the two biggest names in the pack 12 um they are the anchors and the bedrocks of the conference yeah, no doubt. And this is not just like something that people were expecting. This is like your girlfriend dumps you out of the blue because she met your neighbor. You know, yeah. that's what happened here. And, um, and, and, you know, and why, you know, did they do this? Well, the reason is obvious and it's the fundamental bedrock of the show. Alex, what is it? Money. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. The big I, 12. I remember was... When I was coming up with different logos, one of them was just a big dollar sign for <laughs> your show. So a real quick story. So I wanted to, uh, cause I recorded the intro to this show and right. as Alex knows, it was me tinkering around seeing if I could record something. And I sent it to Alex and said, is this even something we could even do? I'll write something real. Right. And right. Alex said, no, we can use this little snippet of it and this is good enough. Yeah. And so that is the, sh- that is the theme to the show. But what I've wanted to do is record Pink Floyd's money. For right. And show. then you looked in the copyright. And you well, were, I, I knew it was yeah. obviously copyrighted. Yeah. So, but, but I wrote. There's a a body of group of people that are a company that manages copy musical copyrights and stuff. So I wrote them and told them what I want to do. And they said, yeah, no problem. Here's this 15 page application. Right. Because Pink Floyd is very picky and I didn't want to mess with Pink Floyd. No, because I know they're picky and they like getting money for their stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and like Roger Waters is a jerk and, you know, all that. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fill out a 15 page form so I can play 30 seconds of of money in a different key i'm just not going to do that no no uh (laughs) but but anyway okay so let's break down what's really happening with this uh there's been talk for a long time that you know they need to figure out a better college football playoff system and you know i think for a long time everyone thought it would be you'd eventually go to four power conferences with I don't know how many teams each, 16 teams each was, I think, what people talked about at the time. And those four conferences, you know, you just have their champions play each other for a playoff or something. Um, you know, it was it's never really been sussed out. Suddenly, what we're seeing now 
is it's looking like the SEC went to 16 schools. The Big Ten is saying, we got to go to 16 ASAP. And what we're probably going to end up with is those two conferences gobbling up as many schools as they can, up to 20. I, I've heard some people say 24 schools in each conference. And then that'll be it. It'll be two power conferences. They play for a playoff, and that's that. Um, Which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I said that, you know, the news is going to get worse for the Pac-12. There's already talk that Oregon and Washington may jump ship. And uh, they may go to the Big Ten as well. Which would mean you'd get California, Oregon, and Washington. You know, all the big schools from those spots. You know, I, I yeah. heard some talk of uh, Stanford that, you know, probably helps them get that San Francisco market. Uh, yeah. So the teams that are currently left mm-hmm. once USC and UCLA, UCLA, UCLA leaves, and this is not like an immediate thing, but right. It's uh, in three or four years, right? Yeah. Um, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, Colorado, Washington, Washington State, Oregon State, Oregon, Stanford, and Cal. And so, yeah. yeah, so if UCLA and USC leave, that leaves basically Oregon and Stanford as the two biggest names left. Right. And if they leave, then you've really got a second-tier conference. Yeah. To the extent it wasn't anyway, you know, the media never respected it because most of them are from the East Coast. So they they tend to not get as many votes in polls. And, um, you know, the SC, everybody's all, you know, gaga over the SC. Other than USC being, you know, one of those legacy franchises. Yeah, but the legacy of Reggie Bush, has they've never gotten over the Reggie Bush. No, no, that's true. They, that tainted them for a long time. Yeah, it uh, really did. But um, before that, you know, they were a perennial contender, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I'm glad you brought up the, the bigger picture, though, because it's really where I want to go from this. Yeah. Excuse me, my throat was all no. It's all right. Crappy. You um, have your thing. I have my iced coffee. You know, we're, we got we got to stay hydrated. We got two shows to do. Well, I'm actually, you know, ironically enough, I'm on a water limit because of my heart problem. Oh, okay. Believe it or not. Um, but anyway, yeah. So the bigger picture to me is this: if you combine NIL mm-hmm. with the enormous amount of TV money in a couple of big power conferences, right? I think the landscape of College football has changed permanently and forever, and I don't know if it's a good thing necessarily. I, I honestly, I mean, I think they probably need like a relegation system, uh, you yeah. know, like a two tiered thing, a relegation system, and, and I think they need to f- quit with the pres- the uh, facade that this is amateur athletics. It's not amateur athletics. This is professional football, professional basketball. Yeah, funded by bribe, literally bribes, legal bribes from sponsors directly to players it's just mm-hmm. not your great your your father's or even your you know your college football of your youth it is not that at all and so i think they need to dump the entire system you can have a tier one with the sec and pac-12 teams yeah. and then if you you know exactly like what happens in euro soccer is if they don't win a certain amount then they get kicked down to a lower level league and well, something in, gets brought up in soccer. I think it's every year. The worst team from the top conference drops. Yeah. And the best like team that. from the next one goes up, but, and they have like six tiers, you know, or I don't remember how right. many. Yeah. It's, a, it's on a bunch yeah. region or a part of the world. You're That's what about. they need really. Cause I, I just, yeah. I don't think the entire, I don't think the system is working anymore. And, and it's not any fun for fans of the sport to have just two conferences with uh, no. you know, every team in it. That's not well, and, and, the thing that is ridiculous to me about this is, all right, so let's assume you get at least two more, maybe three more from the West Coast going to the Big 12. Uh, you probably add, cause, and the, the talk is that they want to raid the ACC also, and get Virginia or Virginia Tech, North Carolina, uh, you know, a couple more East Coast schools for the Big 12. 10 or whatever it is what wh- by the way we got to stop calling it the big 10 at some point if you have 24 teams <laughs> it's just come up with a 20. new name <laughs> you know come up with a better name than this because this name is terrible yes you know, you know. uh same with you pack 12 P- just call yourself the pack don't like P- stop putting numbers in your names when you don't have that number of teams you know? oh if they don't now they did yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the Pac-12 used to be the Pac-10. At least they changed theirs based off of Well, see, but the Big tw- 10 the uh, you know, you the problem is you got the Big 12 and you right. got the Big 10. 
And so, you know, they can't have the same name. Yeah. 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 So I understand that. Come up with a better name. Big whatever is a stupid name anyway. <laughs> it is stupid. <laughs> like, so here are the teams that are in yeah. the Big 12. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Northwestern, Ohio State, Penn State, Purdue, and Rutgers. How many teams is that? So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's 10, 14, 11, 12, and then with the 13, two, they're adding 16. 16, yeah. And yet so they're, somehow and the they're talking about getting to 20 to 24. So, and that's what I mean. I mean, it's at what point do you admit that the landscape of college football is ruined? Oh, yeah. It doesn't oh. even matter. I mean, there's people who are just. You know, college football is their thing, and they're going to watch the SEC yeah. uh, every week and all that. I mean, at what point is it just over? Uh, I think it is already been ruined for a while in terms of this big picture stuff. Uh, I think the fact that they've never come up with a good playoff format ruined it, or, you know, and and led to this in the first place. I mean, so, they they kept they they came up with a playoff format that makes them a ton of money. Right. But that's decidedly different than from saying it's a playoff format that is logical and works. <laughs> right. You can't have a playoff of four and call it a playoff. Well, you could, but you've created a playoff format where it doesn't matter what happens in your conference championship. It's stupid. like, yeah, it, it's they, stupid. they came up with a playoff format where conference champion, if they'd said only conference champions get in. OK, I could understand it then, you know, like it doesn't make sense. That schools don't even make their conference championship and get into a playoff. Like that's idiotic. It's, it's stupid. And and we've had teams be put in the playoff after losing their conference championship right. to a team that was not put in the playoffs. Right. It's ridiculous. It, it made zero sense because they are obsessed with their little power ranking polls, uh, which are also very antiquated. Let's be honest. Coaches' polls are uh, are just. It's something that was great in the 1930s or whatever. <laughs> You're not going to convince me it's not ripe with corruption. Oh, it is. Absolutely it is. I've always said, and I don't know how many conferences are left, but what I've always said, is, it used to be 12 at one point. Uh, I think they're down to 10 now. Okay. So I've always said, I, it, let's do a 16-team tournament. Right. Every conference championship, conference champion, and then you have however many left Wild over cards. at large bids there is. Yeah. Right. And then if you win, you know, the, uh, you know, the all America conference, congratulations, you're in. Now you have to go play Ohio state because you are the 16th seed. That's right. perfectly fair. Um, right. but I, the idea that Cinderella's it, yeah, which of is course. what people love. Yeah. yeah. And, and just dump the bowls. I and mean, the bowls are ruined. Just get rid of them. They don't yeah. serve anybody any purpose anymore, except that people are running them, make a ton of money. That's it. Yeah. It, it was, a, it was a good concept for, you know, Back when we had black and white TVs, I get it. You know, like, well, at one point they mattered and people yeah. cared about them, and they don't now. And ESPN owns half those bowls right. as it is. Well, and um, also there's like there were at one point thirty something bowls. You know, the, there were just too many of them anyway. Well, every team that has six wins is eligible to get in, and almost all of them do. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, which do you remember you uh, there was one point? Not well, maybe you wouldn't, but I remember because you know I went to a mid-major school, so them getting in a bowl was special, even if it was like the Lay's potato chips bowl in, you know, I don't, I don't know. I always said the tidy bowl. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> you name a random stupid bowl game. They were so, there were so many bowls, they were starting to put five and seven teams in because they couldn't get enough teams that were over 500. Which yeah, was well, that's the rule. A problem. That is the rule. I yeah. mean, and we keep my university off this show, but yeah, I mean, I believe me, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you've seen that happen too. Oh yeah, um, no, absolutely. So, so the Pac-12. Um, yeah, you have to wonder what is next, and and the reason why, as Alex said, the reason why all this is happening is money. And where's the money coming from? Well, it's TV contracts, right? And the Big Ten has their own Big Ten network. You know, mm -hmm. where it's making a ton of money and there's contracts with, you know, the other major networks and stuff. They don't play the, the biggest games sometimes aren't on the Big Ten network. They're on major ABC or ESPN or well, something. And those are moving, too, though, I hear, you know, like those deals are changing. They're all changing. And it's just all about more and more and more money. Mm -hmm. I can't fault them for that. But at the same time, I think we all ought to be honest and admit that one college football is professional football. Yeah. And then two, 
it's just not what it used to be. You know, if you want to call it the minor league NFL league, you know, fine with me because that's really what it is. Yeah. Uh, the the one thought I also had about uh, what the Big Ten and I we keep saying Big Ten and Big Twelve because again, stupid names. They're, well, they're that is names. the name of the conference. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. It's dumb, but that yeah, is yeah. the name. All right. So the the thing the Big Ten's done that's very smart. They have now gotten the L.A. market, which is the second biggest TV market in the country. They've got no one really has the New York market, but they got close with Rutgers. They're in New uh, Jersey, Maryland. at least. They have University yeah. of Maryland. They have Maryland. <laughs> and by the way, there was a thing that came out recently. D.C., the D.C. Baltimore combined statistical area. Apparently, we're now considered one metro region together uh, according to the since census they've been considered one metro region it just happened with the recently with the census hmm. that's now the third largest population in the united states my guess is that the people of baltimore are very offended by that and the people and the, of dc are offended by it it's because it, we all hate each other <laughs> well it's more to me it's more kind of like that the people of washington have contempt for baltimore and Baltimore have jealousy for Washington. That's yes. why I've always seen it. Yes. And it's sports related because of the whole senators thing. And, uh, you know, Peter the Angelo's and, blocked, you know, for yeah. decades, yeah. blocked a team in D.C. Yep. And, and uh, you know, the Redskins tried to block the Ravens from getting there. So, like, yeah. there was that, too. So, yeah, there is some contempt there between those two areas. Well, two it's the cities. same with, like, Houston and Dallas. For those of you who don't live in Texas, which is probably most of you. I mean, the the people of Houston do not like the people of Dallas. Yeah, the but people Dallas of Dallas don't care. A pretty far drive. It's what five hours? About four, if you hurry. I mean, but yeah. it's still Texas. Um, yeah, yeah. And the point is, like, you talk to any Texan fan down here, they all hate Dallas, like as much sure. as Redskins fans do. Not quite as much because there isn't the rivalry, long time rivalry. But the people of Dallas can care less. Right. Right. Uh, and that's kind I, of I, what the same thing with Washington and Baltimore a little bit. Yes. The, but regardless, my point being the Big Ten now has three of the biggest TV markets. They're all around Chicago, which is the fourth, you know. And I, well, I guess they have Northwestern. So that is the Chicago market. And it, well, University of Illinois, which is in Champaign. Right. I mean, it's still <clears throat> Illinois market, you know, Chicago market. Yeah. So, I mean, they've just gone after the big TV markets, which, in my opinion, very smart of them see what does it tell you so let's examine the landscape why would they do this why would they pay more money well one the sports media is just insanely gaga over the sec Mm -hmm. even if they don't deserve it (laughs) to be perfectly honest i I think it's a bit overrated um you know yeah alabama wins every year but there have been years when they don't deserve it and they get put into that playoff anyway Mm -hmm. um but the bottom end of the SEC is not any better than the bottom end of any other conference. And they tend to play um, weak teams on their, you know, off uh, conference schedule sometimes, all of that. And so what is the Pac-10 doing or a Big Ten doing? Like Alex said, they are competing with the SEC. How? By getting markets from coast to coast. That is right. the brilliant marketing part of it. Yeah, you know, they could have found some – they could have poached – Tried to poach Texas and Texas A&M instead of the SEC. They could have done that. Mm -hmm. There are some other schools. You know, go get Florida, Florida State, maybe. Well, and so that's where I think the next thing is going to be is the the ACC. And that's going to get rated at some point by both these conferences, right? Like, Absolutely. It only makes sense that uh, somebody from, like, the Big Ten is going to try and get into Florida even though I feel like that's mostly SEC territory. You know, they already have the Gators, uh, but they don't have, uh, you know, any of the other big markets like Miami. Miami or Florida State, Yeah. You know. Well, Florida State's not a big TV market, but it is a big... It's a major program. Yeah, yeah, it's a big program. They have a big fan base. Yeah, it's not yeah. a big market, because, let's see, Florida's in Tallahassee, right? And yeah, then, which I think has a population of, like, 30. It's a very small city. It's not that small. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a small city, though. And then Florida State is where? Uh, Florida... Or, or, hold on. Is Flo- One is in Jacksonville, one is in Tallahassee, basically. Florida State, I believe, is Jacksonville. Okay. Hold yeah. on. Well, I will tell you. Because... Uh, actually, it might be Florida is in is in Jacksonville. Okay, Florida State is in Tallahassee. Okay. According to Wikipedia. 
And then Flor- University of Florida must be in Jacksonville because I know one of them is because I've yeah, been Yeah, it's right there. outside Jacksonville. It's not actually in Jacksonville, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So, I mean, no, I mean, certainly those aren't, neither one of them are the biggest TV markets right. in the world, but those are major programs. And, and I just think 100% they're going to get poached. Yeah. Yeah. So will Miami. Miami's too big of a program not to get poached, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then if you end up with basically two conferences. Right. The, I, the, the ones that'll be interesting to me will be places like Virginia Tech, Virginia, the Tobacco Road part of the ACC, because I don't consider North Carolina generally to be a powerhouse in football, but it I don't is in consider basketball. Virginia Tech to be a powerhouse in football. Yeah, but uh, like the Carolinas are powerhouses in basketball, and that's going to come into this too. You know, is it yeah, worth going after football. a Duke? Or in North Carolina, just to get those powerhouses for your basketball conference. Perennial, perennial NCAA tournament winners, probably. Yeah, yeah I and would. They're going to so. get slaughtered in football, you know, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, you got to have to. You you're still going to have to have a few easy wins in football. Well, that's <laughs> when they play like they're out of conference schedule. They'll play like Northeast North Dakota State or something. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. Yeah. So that is the landscape of college football, and you throw in NIL to that, and it's just a total mess. It is. So God bless you if you still keep up with that. I, I lost interest in it a long time ago, except for a few. I mean, I do w- wonder what will happen to smaller or mid-major schools like yours and mine. You know, like, where will they end up? Right. Like, is it just going to become a new bowl conference, kind of like, you know, how we have the FBS, FCS thing? Or are we just going to create a different tier in between? They should. They really yeah. should. They need yeah. to blow the whole thing up. Um, another person who's had a very bad day, and not just not just the Big Ten or the Pac-12, rather, Brittany Griner. Yeah, who's somebody we, we have not talked about on this show somehow for all these months. Brittany Griner has been rotting away in a Russian prison since mm-hmm. I believe February, maybe. And so uh, it was a week before the invasion. She got arrested. Yeah. So February fifth so, or something like that. If you haven't been following this, because you know, let's be honest, it's women's basketball and nobody follows women's basketball. She got arrested at an airport in Russia for having Mm -hmm. cannabis oil in a vape cartridge. Right now, if you got arrested for that in an American, uh, airport, certainly you might get charged with a crime. Uh, it's probably a misdemeanor for the amount she had and you would be released on on recognizance and you would, except uh, you know probation for a few months and then that right. would be the end of it even in federal court i mean they, they wouldn't bother to prosecute this she was charged with containing 0. 0.702 grams of cannabis oil february 17th um so that's what you get charged with. now she's been locked up all this time there's no bail no anything she's been in a russian prison all this time and mm-hmm. I think it's safe to say, and I, Alex, not to speak for you, but I think certainly this is political, political motivated oh, arrest. Absolutely. This is the highest profile person the Russians could get their hands on. And so they're going to keep her come hell or high water. Now she's about to have a trial. Well, the, the trial started actually last night. Right. Oh, sorry. I remember. misspoke. It started. Yeah. Last, yeah. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Now, this is not like trials you would see in the United States where there's a full defense. There's a full prosecution. This is a trial where the acquittal is less than 1%. Right. So uh, do you really so, think that she's going to be found uh, not guilty? No. No. Uh, I mean, Russia's hoping to use her as leverage to get the U.S. to stop supporting the Ukraine. Uh, it's more than with, that, though. So, oh, yeah. It's more than that, too. But There's a guy of- who's rotting in an American prison called Victor Bout who is nicknamed the Merchant of Death. By the way, I'm reading this out of a Fox News story. Brittany Griner trial begins. Yeah. Russian practice prosecutors reveal case against being based star by Paula, Paulina Dedage, I guess. Right. This is dated uh, the 1st of July. So anyway, so this Victor Bout fellow, if you've never heard of him, is called the Merchant of Death. And he's, on a tw- he's doing 25 years for conspiracy to kill citizens and providing aid to terrorist organizations. So basically without getting political here, so I will try to avoid that. Almost no president could give that guy up. No. For even for a semi-famous athlete like Britney. No. Uh, you, you generally do not let people with the nickname merchant of death out of jail. 
you know, certainly not for a basketball player. I mean, you might consider that if like the rush, you know, the envoy, the CIA <laughs> station chief in Moscow got arrested. You right. might consider it, but not for a basketball player. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, someone high value politically, an ambassador, anything like that. Sure. I, I could understand that. Even uh, and Steve, I know we don't really talk about the even like uh, off air. We haven't really talked about the whole Ukrainian situation. Go ahead. But we we know that there are a lot of U.S. ex-military uh, folks who have gone over to volunteer for the Ukrainian army. Yes. And there was a story recently that at least four Americans were captured. I could even understand maybe them being a better bargaining chip in this situation than a celebrity athlete. I can you know? guarantee you that the American government will let them hang out to dry. Right. I've been around too long to know that. So if they're going to let those guys hang out to dry, certainly Brittany Griner also. Now, but I, I, no, I'm saying they. I would be expecting more likely they would go after. Oh yeah, no, I know what you mean. Then. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, but I maintain yeah. they're going to let them hang out to dry anyway. Sure. Uh, you know, as part of this administration isn't big on the military. They let people hang out to dry in Afghanistan, and that's beyond the scope of the show. But there's no doubt in my mind that they're not going to lift a finger. For those guys that went to Ukraine, and they're not going to lift a finger for Brittany Griner either. Now, I don't know if you read the article, Alex. Do you know how many years she's facing? Yes, she's facing 10 years. I, I do know that. So what I found fascinating, and I read a couple articles, but there was one in ESPN that kind of goes over how the Russian legal system works. And we should put air quotes around legal system. There. It's not a real justice right. system. I I think that they still use the same basic framework that they've had since the czar. Uh, like, I think they used it during Stalin's time. They use it now because the way it works, folks, only the prosecution can present evidence. If the defense has evidence, they can give it to the prosecution and the prosecution can decide to present it or not. This is why they have a 99 percent conviction rate. Right. If you are a judge, you see the evidence. You uh, and a, a trial can take a day or you can disappear for a week and, it, and you know, you can do whatever you want as a judge. But judges will be punished if they do not convict. So put that into your like how you process this. this. Like, and let's also add to this that she probably did have. 7.7 grams of cannabis oil in a vape cartridge. Does that surprise yeah. anybody? She probably did have that. She probably did, but again, it's well, Russia. We'll never know you, the truth. <laughs> yeah. Would you trust the Russian government to tell the truth in any of this? No, of course not. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I saw that was interesting today when reading about what happened in the first part of her hearing today. Oh, oh, uh, a lot of focus on this aspect. You're still kept in a cage when you go to a judge there. Like they they literally put you in a cage as you're in court, which is kind of wild. That's very medieval feeling, right? Well, I uh, mean, in America, that would be very prejudicial to a jury, and this is not right. What we're well, talking they don't have juries, there. right? We're they, not talking you, about you only that. have a jury if it's like a capital murder spree, you know. Right. <laughs> like, this uh, is a judge alone thing, so it's not prejudicing anybody. I think it's absurd. Right, but, you know, but well, it's prejudice in that you're going to be found guilty no matter what. Like that's how. Well, it's it, not a real trial. Yeah, yeah. This is not Brittany Griner can't go hire Johnny Cochran. No, it's you know, not a real trial uh, because Russians don't really have trials to begin with. And then this is an extra show trial because obviously Russia wants to use her as a bargaining chip, chip of some kind. They know that nobody watches the WNBA. I don't know. You you would think that they would know that. <laughs> I, I'm saying it's just the highest profile person they could get their hands on. Right. Well, they. I mean, there are uh, uh, Russian hockey players who they could have gone and got, but I don't think that would have been a thing. No. I don't think those Russian hockey players go home too much, so. Well, like, no, they do because Putin's basically, like, Alex Ovechkin's back in Russia right now because he? he's been told if he doesn't, you know, play along with Putin, his family goes bye-bye. Hasn't, because Ovechkin has said some decent things about Putin, if I recall. Right, right. He doesn't have a choice. In a lot of we will things. kill your family if you do not support. Them. Yes, Emperor you like Putin, or you like and you like family. Yes, <laughs> Vladimir Putin. If everybody does not understand this, is the biggest mafia leader in the world. Yeah, he That's also might he be is. the richest man in the world because of it. Yeah, probably he might be. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't. You compare him to Elon Musk and the royal family and some others, yeah. but he's certainly one of them. Yeah. 
I think the, it'd be very hard to calculate Vladimir Putin's true net worth. Right, because half of it's dark money anyway. Yes. It, if not more. Yes. Um, all of it all I've talked to some Russian lawyers and stuff. Yeah. And the, all roads lead to Putin. Yeah. Legal and otherwise. You know, he truly is an evil there's he's one of the more evil bastards on the planet. He he, he is this era's uh of history's uh not Saddam, uh Stalin. He's definitely yes. up in that Hitler, Stalin, uh, Mao kind of Absolutely. level of dictatorship ability. Absolutely. So what does yeah. all this have to do with Brittany Griner? Well, obviously the Russians are trying to use her as a bargaining chip. They're trying to thumb their nose at the West. Right. Um, you know, they're trying to get this Merchant of Death guy uh, released. I think all of these things are true at once. And what's going to happen to Brittany Griner? It's almost a guarantee that she's going to get convicted. Mm -hmm. And they're going to let her rot in a Russian prison until... The U.S. decides to give up somebody they want, which may never happen. Right. Because the State Department has classified her as wrongly detained. And that doesn't mean they can do anything about it. It just means that they think she's wrongly detained. And they're probably mm -hmm. right. Because, again, I mean, what reasonable country? I'm very against cannabis, as Alex knows. But what reasonable country would detain and refuse to release someone before conviction with no bail over 0.7 grams of cannabis oil? That's crazy. Well... Yeah, it, it it's. I mean, uh, that's an absurdly small amount of cannabis. It's and, very, very small. Like they're even trying to say she was trafficking it with that level of, you know, cannabis. She trafficking oil. it to like an ant. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make the the one thing that I've never been clear about with this whole situation. Like we all knew what was going on with Russia and the Ukraine, and that her war was about to happen. Like, yes, she got arrested a week before Russia actually declared war. We knew about it for, what, three months at least? Well, at if, least. If you were paying attention to the intel, more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I know, like, you and I are both, you, you're military aware, I'm very politically aware. For us, it's probably more like a couple of years that we knew this was coming. Um, <laughs> like, something, P Putin had been trying to do this multiple times. What are you doing going to Russia right before this happens? Well, I, I mean, I do know why she did that. It's okay. that the WNBA players famously do not make a lot of money. Why don't they make a lot of money? Well, it's because nobody watches it, and right. so their ratings are abysmal, and so their TV contracts pay out nothing. And, you know, as you know, like LeBron James makes more than almost entirely combined, mm -hmm. just to, as an example. So a right. lot of these WNBA players actually go play international on a regular basis. Oh, when okay. the, I don't know when the WNBA season goes on. I don't think it's directly competing with the NBA, but whenever it is, after it's over, then they go overseas because there is a market over there. But you know, they're by you know by the standards of the average American, they're, I mean, upper middle class sort of income as a WNBA player. Yeah, and if they can double that, them raking around a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, like which is lot, not bad money, but uh, that's yeah. not you're not wealthy. No, making that you're living a very comfortable life in almost any major city though right but you're not making and so first of all as a side note for these WNBA players who are whining about equality and you know why aren't we making more money well put on a game that people will watch and your income will go up it's as simple as that it has nothing to do with male or female it has everything to do with the fact that nobody likes your league yeah it but, has to do with the fact that you don't have a good tv deal you know but why don't you have a good tv deal because they don't drive ratings right. because there's five people watching it um so anyway, so the point I was making with all this is that the reason Brittany Griner was in Russia is because she's supplementing, and she's the highest paid player in the WNBA, by the way, um, but she's supplementing her income, as do almost every WNBA player. That's mm. Mm. I, I didn't realize that was why she was oh, yeah. over there. Yeah, she had a contract with a Russian team. Because if you notice, like even NBA players who are kind of washed up and over the hill will sometimes do this. So oh, yeah, thing. go play in Europe and stuff. And, and a lot of uh, Major League Baseball players mm -hmm. will do this. Like I, there's a guy, Major League Baseball player in our neighborhood who I know, who went to Japan to play for a year or two. I don't want to say oh, his okay. name because you know. No, no, I got you. But like, yeah, I'm not I mean, trying to drop name drop. But and I mean, Japan's the basically the number two baseball country in the world. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, right. I, I think Cuba technically would be up there, but Japan's really. Japan paid. has a much bigger 
Yeah, they pay league more. And it's not controlled by communists, and so it's right. it's a true league, and God knows what Cuba has. You know, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think you get paid well in Cuba, would be my guess. I, would, I don't know if you get paid at all in Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> it's free room and board. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, um, yeah, so, but yeah, I, I mean, like, I've known guys who played in uh, European NBA. Uh, one of the former secretaries of education, uh, uh, Arnie Duncan, he was a European NBA player. Uh, what you know before he got into like academia and being a you know principal and all the stuff that he did to become secretary. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he played at Harvard too. Like so, like it, he went from legitimate college player to doing that for a while. I mean, so, my friend, the baseball player, had a full major league baseball career mm-hmm. and just wasn't done. Uh, you know, when he was no longer welcomed or wanted in the league anymore. And so he went to so he was in his like mid to late thirties, I'm guessing, and just jumped over there for two years or something. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So that is Brittany Griner. We, once we, that is the, we brought it up this week, primarily because one, Chris doesn't like these kind of stories and more importantly that this trial is going on. And so we'll update you when this trial it, is over and when she's convicted, we will let you know. It's fascinating uh, because of the political stuff that's around it. It really is. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, okay. So um, more to the true point of this show, which is all about money. Right. Uh, next up here is the Sunday NFL ticket. Alex, would you like to explain the current status of the Sunday NFL ticket? All right. So currently NFL ticket is direct TV only, as we know. Uh that has had some serious cons for in terms of people getting it because DirecTV uh, is a satellite dish company, which is pretty antiquated technologically speaking. Um, so not everyone can get access to it, especially if you live in like apartments and high rises and things. Well, like ironically that. enough, they do have a streaming service. Yeah, I've tried to subscribe to it, and I was told by DirecTV that I do not live in the right area. And what they mean by that is. If you live in a big city, like I believe Chris Larry has direct TV, mm-hmm. the straight, the NFL direct ticket. Sorry. If you live in a major city, you can subscribe to it. If you don't, and it's only certain cities. Um, if you live in the suburbs, like I do, you have to buy the full satellite dish. The concept right. is if you can't put a satellite dish on your apartment complex, they will let you subscribe to the streaming service. I yeah. got told by direct TV. No, we, we're not going to sell you this. Right. It, it's a, it's a terrible system, and the, the fact that the NFL has gone along with this as long as they have, it really has been a disservice to the fans. In well, my see, it's not really that they have gone along with it. It's that they had a major, had a major – humo- No, they had a major, major lawsuit about the contract, and the NFL lost. Mm. They tried to get out of this a few years ago and lost spectacularly in court. Yes, but the good news, after this season, that contract is over. Uh, and the NFL has basically flipped the double bird to direct TV and uh, AT&T who I think owns direct TV now. Yes. And they are looking at three companies, Disney, Amazon, and Apple to figure out who can get the new Sunday ticket offer package. What the big thing about this, of course, all th- these are the three Three of the biggest, not maybe the three biggest, but the three of the biggest live streaming platforms that are out there online. Uh, Disney still owns ESPN, too, of course, so that's a big thing. You're talking about a major shift forward in the way people can get this Sunday ticket package. And a good thing, too. Uh, You know, Steve, like I know you're not into streaming but you bought a new tv it came with all the streaming package imagine well, if- that tv does stream because I, the room that we're in in my house right is an office and there is not a cable receptacle in this office because they were going to charge me some uh, right. ridiculous amount of money to run wires there so i've never had a tv before recently and this tv has to be streaming only otherwise it's not a tv right so i mean whoever gets it uh, is is yours Amazon based or no, you know, I don't do Amazon. I don't no, believe no. in Amazon. No, I, I am a an Xfinity cable subscriber. And so I can get their Xfinity streaming app on this TV. Right. And then it comes with some Samsung streaming thing that automatically comes. Okay. On so it's a Samsung streaming, it, but yeah. it's got, 
what's going to happen is whoever gets it, they're going to come up with apps for all these TVs, and you'll just be able to buy a Sunday ticket on your TV, and that'll be that. And it'll make everyone a lot happier. (laughs) My problem is, of course, I don't believe in Amazon, and I also don't believe in Disney because they've gone over the top. And you don't believe in Apple. It's not that I don't believe in Apple. It's that I have a Samsung phone. Oh, okay. And I'm not going to, you know, and I don't like streaming stuff. I don't like, it's my philosophy, and I think everybody ought to have this philosophy. If you're going to be a cable subscriber, just be a cable subscriber. If you're going to be a streamer, just stream. Don't do both. I refuse to spend that much money. My kids yeah, have well, asked me for this. Spending money on both is, you know, chaotic. Absurd. Yeah. And it, it, so the, uh, the price point would be insane. Yeah. Well, that's the point. I've told my kids that. It's like, we're not, we're either going to stream or have cable. And I, because I get the, Trump car, Trump vote here. Um, right. And we're going to have for it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have cable. And right. so, but it comes with a bunch of streaming apps and stuff as it is, mm-hmm. you know, but, but yes. So I think that this is, first of all. So for the, but up, for the 99% of us that are just, I don't care who has it. And I'm not going to boycott somebody just because, uh, you know, I'm told by Fox News or CNN or whatever, whoever I'm supposed to be boycotting. Nobody's telling me anything. I just don't like what Disney's doing, so I'm not going to give them money. It's period. That's yeah. it. I've never liked Disney. I've never liked any. I, it's funny to me. All these companies that people are now protesting, I'm like, yeah, we were protesting Disney and Nike in the 80s for, you know, being terrible human beings. What were you doing then? <laughs> you know, like. Well, I don't think everybody knew that Nike was horrible back in the 80s unless you're really uh, they paying were attention. running giant swept shops everyone knew that remember the whole there was a whole Jor- thing with jordan about that i don't remember that okay. but I, I mean yeah i mean it's just information is not as readily available is all my point but so what kind of contract are they looking at the number is going to be between two and three billion and by the way what I, we're reading here is um a story on CNBC called Disney, Apple, and Amazon keep waiting as NFL considers Sunday ticket offers by Jessica Golden right. and Alex Sherman. Um, there's no timetable for this. However, the direct TV contract runs through the end of 2022, correct, Alex? Yep. Okay. So I'm while assuming not, that means the end of the season, not the year. <laughs> well, either way, yeah. it's the same thing, is it not? <laughs> well, you know, the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Okay, so anyway, um, that's the number. It's not clear as to how many years this is going to extend, so I don't really know what that is per year. Um, But is this going to mean a lower price? No. No. It's going to mean that the price is going to go up. Right. The the price will probably be $400 a season or something like that. Yeah, the CNBC column says, or just says, it won't be able to significantly lower the price of Sunday ticket from the current 300. That's as right. far as they're willing to go. It wouldn't surprise me at all if it went up a lot. Yeah, I don't, I mean, of course, if it goes up too high, no one will, like, there. there is a price point that people will stop ba- paying at, you know, and. Uh, That's called the free market. That's true for everything. Sure, sure. But y- you have to wonder what that price point is. I don't know. Um I, I would assume that every time you go up by a hundred dollars, like the percentage of people who are willing to pay it drops significantly. But that's not the only part of the calculus though. Yeah. The other part of the calculus is you may make more money with less people if you raise the price enough. And so there's this is how companies this is why companies hire professional marketing people to determine exactly right. what is the right price point so you can make the most money out of the combination of the two variables, one which is price, two which is the number of people who will buy your product. And so the price can go up and they can still make more money even if they lose subscribers. Uh, right. You know, and I for mean, me, I mean, most people don't have my political problem. A lot, well, a lot of people on my side of the political aisle do, but I'd say as a general rule in public, people don't care and they just want to go buy it. Yeah. I, I would say a majority of the public is not going to care right. about that if, right. If like me, I, I've wanted DirecTV too, and I was in the same – I was in an apartment building, Steve, at one point and was told that I, I would have to put a satellite dish, like in a bucket of cement. Where they want you to put it? <laughs> yeah, like they were like, get a bucket of cement, and you would put a satellite dish on a pole in that, and that's how you could get DirecTV. In your apartment? Well, on like a balcony in the apartment. <laughs> Hanging on a – hey, put yeah. it on a, in a bucket of cement. Yes. Are they serious? That that's what they were saying. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. goodness. Um that so like look, moving away from satellites, good good plan. 
you know, peri- no one should have a satellite dish by now. Like, even in the rural areas, we should be running internet out to them. Like, should be. We aren't necessarily, but we should be. No, there's a lot of rural areas that they have to have satellites to get internet. Yeah, but, Steve, I'm in a very rural area up at my summer house. Like, we don't get cell phone service. It's that rural. We can get internet. Like, it's... But I'm telling you, some can. I mean, around here in Texas, there are parts of out in the middle of nowhere, BFE, Texas, where they have satellite, the internet via satellite. Yeah, it's but those spots are rarer and rarer to the point. Getting and, more, hopefully, I mean. And what percentage of the population is at that point anymore? Very Two, small. Three percent. I don't know, but very small. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. So it, I think it's a good thing. Over, it'll be better for us overall to go this direction because this, as much as you're a cable person, Steve, the writing is on the wall for cable TV. No, it's, it's been on really the wall not for though. What the writing is on the wall for is a cable box in your home. What is very much um, on the books and will remain on the books, it may be in a different form, but Xfinity is not going anywhere. They're just going to come to the point where it's just all going to stream directly into your house. And listen, somebody at some point is going to be intelligent enough to realize what they need to do is package all these streaming services together as one. Buy five different streaming services through one company. What does that suspiciously look like? Cable. Well, so some of them are going to go away. I think Netflix is going to die off at some point. Now that's been the hemorrhaging customers. Yeah, yeah. And at one point it was the king. It's going away now because uh, Disney and all these major broadcast companies are just hoarding their stuff and creating their own. Netflix made made a name for itself by being allowing people to rent on DVD. Movies right. from every major studio, and every studio has their own streaming service. So Netflix right. is caught in the box of making their own content, which they do have some very good stuff. But they've got a slew of junk, and nobody watches that. Junk. Yes, I mean some of their TV shows. Like I've just been, I just watched the last season of Stranger Things. Great shows, but some of them are. But yeah, I've never. It seen might not Stranger be everyone's S- taste. Yeah, I've never seen Stranger Things, but I know it's very popular and well received. But every Stranger Things, there's. 10 that are horrible yeah that are just watches. awful yeah <laughs> but my point is you know somebody's gonna be smart enough to bundle these things together and that's going to be a direct competitor to cable tv it's going to be essentially mm-hmm. the same as cable tv all yeah. i've all xfinity is doing for me is bundling a bunch of channels together right but even in that situation it, how many of those channels do you actually watch you get like 300 channels, 500 channels well, it's now. Way more than that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's that the channels go up into the thousands if you start adding in all the music. Yeah. But a lot of them are repeats too. It's like here's an SD version, an HD version of 4K. Oh, yeah. Version. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. but there's a ton of channels. And obviously, I don't watch all those or even uh, it's a small percentage of them. You probably watch like 10 TV stations. I mean, that's true for everybody. Right. Uh, you know, <laughs> and um, I, I mean, for me, it's bundling. A bunch of things together, cable, mm-hmm. the phone, the internet, you know, and, and it's just worth it for me to do it. And I like getting the local TV networks, which is useful to me. So, um, yeah. by the way, what we didn't mention about the Sunday direct ticket thing, and we need to move on here in a minute, um, right. is that this is not going to be a locked in. You must be a direct TV customer. You, right. You're not going to have to be an iPhone you know, user to do this. It will be all three of these companies are proposing a wide scale subscription model. So it will be available to a much wider group of people than is direct TV. And that right. is a great thing. Yes. And I mean, that's been my, I've railed against that for years with direct TV. Uh, and you know, that's kind of how I, we started talking about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, for me, I mean, it, you know, it'll allow me to get my new favorite teams games. Right. Right, you you're know, still I'm trying try- to pick a team. <laughs> I'm trying to talk myself into the Saints. Right, I mean, you see how the season goes because I can't just like show up in a Drew Brees jersey and feel good about myself. So it just no. it kind of happens naturally. But I'm thinking I- maybe the Saints because they're the na- nearest NFC team. Right, you you want to stick NFC, and that's the problem. Yep. Like <laughs> you're you're like Saints, Cowboys, or uh, Cardinals. That's it. Yeah, and I can't be a Cowboy fan. No. You know. The Saints, the Cardinals, yeah, maybe one of those. I, I've never liked the Cardinals ownership group either. Um, Tampa, Bill, Tampa, 
would be next one over from the Saints. Or the or the Falcons. Yeah. You yeah. know, is another one. Um, speaking of football, we want to, we're running out of time with this show, but we wanted to give a quick update on L- little Danny Snyder real fast. Mm-hmm. Chris and I did have done many segments on it. We've talked about it on the hog side. We'll probably talk about it again on the hog side. If you want to listen to it. Um, I wrote a big long article about it, a column two weeks ago. You can find on right. the hog So what's new here is that Danny is now dodging a subpoena from this inappropriate congressional committee. How is he doing that? He's on a yacht in the right. Mediterranean off the he, coast of France. He's literally hiding out at sea. <laughs> yes, that is literally <laughs> what he's doing. I mean, what a pathetic loser. Right. Uh, seriously. Right. Uh, it, it, the funniest thing about the Dan Snyder yacht stuff is there's now multiple people on Twitter who are just tracking the Lady S. How do you track uh, a yacht? Uh, well, they all have GPS systems. So but how do you track a yacht? I don't know. Like there's a website. <laughs> what are you hacking into to track a yacht? Probably, uh, some kind of maritime law website. That I can tracks... understand how you track airplanes. Cause I know the world of airplanes. And if you right. file a flight plan, right. That's, you know, that that's is a fairly pl- easy because flight plans have to be specific. Well, yeah. I mean, and they're filed and all that. Not everybody has to file a flight plan, but in right. many cases you do, but a yachts aren't filing a sailing plan uh well but you know so, so there's like a hackers? literal website just boat tracker i know but what are they yeah. doing are they hacking into somebody's gps that's what i want to know but I, so I, mean, point- I would think that that a big part of it is all these major boats have gps's in case something happens so that that it's probably on a website somewhere well, that's their principal form of navigation is what it is right, right. so w- what's happening here though to get back to it is that danny is Hiding out on this yacht. What should right. he have done? He could be on his yacht. Uh, he could even do a hearing, a deposition from a yacht if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. But he is cowardly running from his responsibilities. I've said many times I don't agree with the committee, all of that. But it doesn't matter. If you get a subpoena from the committee trying to subpoena you, you need to go. Right. And just prepare properly with your lawyer to make sure you say nothing. Just Dan plead the is, fifth when you need to plead the fifth, yeah, as we talked right. about on uh, the hog side last week. Yeah, and what Dan is doing is, is they apparently tried to serve the lawyer who said, I don't have the authority to accept this. this oh, it, I it thought he says, said he was out of the country, too. Uh, well, one he might have been, but at one point he said he doesn't have the authority to accept this. Because you could have his office accept it if he wanted to. It's not, you know, I mean, that's. I didn't know that easy. you could actually serve a subpoena to the lawyer for a client to show up. Well, the client has to agree to it. And in this okay. case, Dan has clearly Said expressed no. not agree. Yeah. Why is he doing this? Because he's a coward. It's as simple as that. He's a coward. And, and, and my real question is, how long do you intend to float around on the Mediterranean? Are you going to try to wait out? Because odds are this committee is going to go away after the 2022 election because the House is probably going to switch sides. Odds are. And so if that happens, then the committee won't exist anymore. Right. So is he going to wait it out? December. I know. That's my point. Is he going to wait it out? Is he going to float around for half a year on a boat? He he could. I mean. (laughs) Just really try to wait it out. (laughs) Steve, can you think about worse places to hide out than just floating around the Mediterranean in your 200-foot IMAX included yacht. <laughs> I mean, I, even I would get bored with that. And I yeah. don't bore get bored easily. But maybe Dan doesn't. I mean, maybe Dan can get truly everything he wants on the boat. I mean, and he's not like he's going to go bowling. By the know, way, do we even know if his wife is with him? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't think I he, mean, she probably cares. <laughs> the the yacht is named not. after her. It's called the Lady Snyder. So. <laughs> well, so... I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm just uh, like, if he's bringing uh, his alleged $500 prostitutes on the yacht when she's not there, I don't know. Well, that's what I, I mean. Does anybody believe it's a real marriage? I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, especially after reading the stories of the hookers and all that that came out of the testaments, all that's in my column. Yeah, it's yeah. it's and, it, and, <laughs> it's a sham. It's a sham. yeah. OK, uh, so I mean, anyway, I think they've at least had sex twice because they have two kids. That's all, that's what I think. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you about that off the air. <laughs> All right. Um, because I actually got told something by a player. That oh, I uh, on the air. no, don't you told me it. that story. That's it nuts. Don't, it don't say. Yeah, it. I won't. I won't. All right. 
Yeah, because it's also a name people would know, and I don't want to put that through that tone. Okay, last thing real quick. We an update on the Vince McMahon story. Chris and I did the Vince McMahon story wherein Vince McMahon was being investigated by the WWE Board of Directors for an inappropriate sexual relationship with the office. We both thought this is clearly and obviously a stunt. And as it turns out, it is a stunt because Vince McMahon is going to resign as CEO. However, he's going to do this according to a story, which I'll pull up here in a minute. Um, He's doing this in character on WWE SmackDown. Yeah. So that tells you that if you believe this, you're an idiot. Um, The story is on the CNBC. WWE boss Vince McMahon steps away from CEO role while addressing his conduct pro on SmackDown. Mike Kalia and Alex Sherman reporting. So that's that. It's a the whole thing is ridiculous, and I don't understand wrestling. It is. If it was a legitimate story, I I would just be asking why is it all these guys like. Dan Snyder, Vince McMahon, hell, throw Bill Gates in there. Stop having sex with your underlings. Yeah, is it that hard? I mean, you're Vince McMahon. Can't you get anybody? I mean, I don't know about anybody, but he can can. get... And he's a billionaire. Yeah. He can get anybody. And compared to many billionaires, he's he's actually in good shape and pretty good looking. You and I cannot get anybody. Right. Vince McMahon can get anybody. Just flash a wallet and that'll be the end of it. Yes. Hate to say it if you're a female out there. It's, It's not hard. No, I know. I hate to sound sexist, but it's just the truth. Right. Sorry. So and, anyway, and, so by the way, I don't think it's sexist to say that. <laughs> well, it's also, I mean, it wouldn't take a lot for a female to get a male, a female billionaire to get a guy would right. be the same problem. It's not really a gender thing. No, um, no. It's a money it, thing. <laughs> it's a but it's also a like just have some impulse control. Well, thing. yeah, well, it's not that he doesn't have control, it's that he doesn't want to have control. Right. Because right. is there a more arrogant person on the face of the earth than Vince McMahon? Uh, Jerry Jones might be. There's a it, select, very small group of people who have that level of narcissism. Right. In, in terms of billionaires, I think you're In terms probably, of anybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rock stars, rappers, some politicians. Right. I mean, some here's the thing. I give Vince McMahon a lot of credit for what he's done with the he, – he took what is basically a carnival – show sideshow and turned it into a billion dollar empire yeah it was a regional carnival yeah yeah it's not my thing but i respect what he's done so anyway so we're totally out of time here we're two minutes over because the podcast boogeyman is going to cut us off we don't stop talking all right so that is it um please pay attention to the hogsty we you know have the hogsty rick snyder show we'll be back probably around training camp uh it's um what is rick snyder's uh season's discontent Thank you. Yeah. And check out Rick's YouTube page. He does all these cool two minute videos called he, Rick Snyder's Watch. He's all about that now, man. He loves his YouTube. Yeah, no, that's right. Anyway, and so that is that, and we will see you in two weeks. Later. <laughs>